Hey guys, Meet Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Thursday afternoon mountain weather update. Let's go down to New Mexico. Angel Fire Ski Resort down there. 35 inches is what they're saying so far out of the storm cycle. So roughly the last three days. They're going to add quite a bit of additional snow. So you're not even close to done yet in Angel Fire. Ski Santa Fe, more snow on the way. Taos, the Sand Grays, Cuchara in southern Colorado. La Vida Pass, all of those areas, southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, continue to get slammed by this storm system with a lot more yet to go. You can see the view there. There's the country club view. Snow's still coming down. And I want to say a, uh, send a shout out to Greg Ralph down there at Angel Fire, good friend of mine, and his wife April as well. Okay, here is radar out of Colorado, New Mexico. You, so the area of low pressure down in New Mexico continues to mature but you can see the pinwheel effect of the precip around it. So the rotation now is bringing it back up towards parts of the Eastern Plains, the front range of Colorado, and it's coming towards Denver. By tomorrow, we'll be back in it, in the Denver metro area. We had some clearing up here this afternoon. Snow comes back tomorrow, especially after 10 a.m., afternoon, evening, nighttime into Saturday morning. That's when we're gonna pick up the bulk of snow in the Denver metro area. But this is all headed up towards the Front Range High Peaks, Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park. You've got additional snow accumulation coming, Summit County, once this reaches you. Here's the water vapor satellite imagery this afternoon. So your moisture, the key areas right here, there's your area of low pressure. Taking its time, will eventually move north, bringing all of that, uh, all that snow um, back to the same places. So they're going to get swiped twice out of this. That's why some of the totals are going to get, are going to be so big, but it moves back through Eastern Colorado and then it ejects out. Now behind it, big storm here. That'll be a player. Now the cold front out ahead of it, that's also in the forecast. That's looking weaker though. Unfortunately had to take down, um, some of my totals, my forecast totals rather significantly down through the Wasatch and the Tetons as a result. But here are the key dates for snow in the Wasatch, the Tetons, Colorado, New Mexico, and Tahoe. Now, an interesting change. So that front is a little bit weaker around 11, 11, 11, 12, but it's a little stronger in parts of Tahoe and the Sierra. So a little shift in the storm track. That's all it takes sometimes. And now I've got a secondary shot of potentially heavy accumulation for Tahoe and that part of the Sierra around 11, 15, 11, 16. Um, for the Tetons, yeah, it's light around 11, 12 now, and it's moderate accumulation for 11, 16. Okay, let me show you what the forecast radar and satellite look like now. So by 5.30, your storm system with the, the snow, it's, it's blue down in parts of Southern Colorado and Northern New Mexico. That's tonight. Okay, by tomorrow morning, the low starts to make its move. It's moving north. The snow will be building into Denver as the day wears on. Snow will be running up over the top of the Central Mountain Corridor across I-70, Summit County, Vail Pass, all the way down to the Mosquitoes, the Sawatch, Collegiates, and beyond. Still snowing hard in southern and southeast Colorado. Um, and by the time we get to the afternoon, now we're truly in it. Should be moderate to heavy snow across the Denver metro area, parts of the eastern plains, right up against the foothills, areas south of Denver above 6,000 over the Palmer Divide, heavy snow, heavy snow right up to the Continental Divide of Colorado, and then some overruns, some spillover into Summit County, Vail Pass. But generally, like I said this morning, your heaviest amounts are going to be on the Divide and east, with less snow accumulation west of the Continental Divide. The flow is just not right. Let me move this ahead. Here we go by Saturday in the morning. Still got the wraparound effect over the top of Denver and the Front Range. And a little more placement to the west because of the wrapper and the cyclonic curvature will push some of that snow further across the I-70 corridor out towards Aspen, Snowmass, um, Beaver Creek, Vail, Arrow, Arrowhead. All those areas are going to get a little bit more steamboat also on the wraparound. And now and then it's gone. It moves away. By Sunday, we're back to sunny skies. Ski and pow in Colorado, pretty much all day Sunday. Now this next front right here, this is 11, 11 into 11, 12. This really looked pretty impressive this morning. It hits, it hits Idaho and, and BC and Montana and parts of Nevada and it actually looks okay. Then it just kind of fades. By the time it reaches the Wasatch, yeah, we'll get some accumulation out of it, but not what I was thinking this morning. And by the time it hits Colorado, it kind of stays across the Western slope. And then the energy just 
fades out just like that. And then there's another storm system right here. This is 11, 13, 14, 15. This hits the Pacific Northwest, um, a lot of BC, and watch what it does. It will actually go south, and it does affect parts of the Sierra all the way through. And then right there on 11, 15 into 11, 16, a secondary shot on the tail end for uh, Tao and a lot of the, uh, the Sierra there. You can see that. That's a nice development there. Um, and by late 11, 16... Another storm hitting the Pacific Northwest. So here are my latest numbers. Rest of tonight through tomorrow, all the snows in Colorado and northern New Mexico. And most of it, it what you see basically across I-70, Denver, and north, that happens tomorrow. So it's really southern Colorado, northern New Mexico that gets additional accumulation tonight. Um, but all that has yet to fall. Here's 11.9 through 11.10. Some leftover snow in Colorado on 11.9, and then it's totally dry as the storm exits on 11.10. 11.11 through 11.16. This accounts for that cold front plus the additional storm system. And look how far south it goes and towards the Tahoe area and the Sierra. You can see now the numbers have gone up, but they've definitely gone down across uh, parts of the Wasatch and the Tetons and Big Sky. Had to cut those. Uh, looking pretty darn good up there in the Pacific Northwest in BC. Um, and remember, there's another storm for 1116, so that's why some of these numbers are big, with a foot or more in those purple shaded areas. So a lot to look forward to and light accumulations for parts of Colorado during that time period. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great night.